Dragon here. Today we're going to be looking at a game called Battle Shapers. Battle Shapers is a new first person shooter roguelike. It's focused far more on the action first person shooter side with roguelite elements. So if you like first person shooters, you will be right at home. I mean, some of these mechanics are ripped straight from Doom Eternal, and that's not a bad thing. A few weeks ago, the devs reached out to me and they wanted to sponsor my channel and have me cover their new game coming out on Tuesday. By the time you're watching this video, it's out right now. You can go buy it. It's currently in early access and is only on Steam. I'll put a link down below in the video information if you're interested. This project was co-founded by two directors from Ubisoft who have worked on games like Prince of Persia, Assassin's Creed, and Far Cry. Holy shit. So Metric Empire is the studio working on this game. Now, like they said, they are sponsoring me, but I have full freedom to do whatever I want. So take that as you will. The first impression I had when I launched this game was, damn. This music's pretty good. The second thought I had was, eh, I'm not a huge fan of the design of the main character. It's a little too overwatchy for me. Good news is, that's subjective and it really doesn't matter. You're only going to be seeing a gun and a robot arm for 99% of the game. On the flip side, when I actually launched the game, this game looks really good. There is so much detail in this futuristic high-tech city, and each tower you go to has a different unique design. And unlike the main character, whose design I didn't really care for too much, I really like the designs of the bosses. These animations are fluid, there's a lot of personality behind them. It almost reminds me of a windscreen from a fighting game. As for the PC release, it had all the options I expected it to have. FOV slider, no annoying motion blur, everything I wanted was there. I never crashed and I didn't have any serious issues. But that said, there does still need to be a little bit of optimization. I did have all the settings cranked up, but I'm still playing on a 3080, which should be able to handle the game fine, and the frame rate did kind of fluctuate here and then. It never went to anything extreme, I'm complaining about it going from like 120 FPS to like 60 at times, but that's, you know, kind of a bit of a fluctuation that you'll notice and feel as you're playing. It wasn't constant, but it is something they're working on. Aside from the occasional FPS hiccup, the game seems to run perfectly fine, and you should be able to play it without an issue. Okay, but what's actually going on in this game? Well, this is the city of New Elysium. It's a very high-tech, futuristic city, built by Janos and his shapers, or as I read it, Jan OS. Don't know which is right. However, the city was taken over by renegade shapers, known as overlords. Jan OS vanished, and they now control the city. This is where you come in. You play as Ada. You are an ancient shaper not affected by the city's corruption. Effectively, you need to destroy the overlords and fix the issue. Each overlord controls a tower, and you need to cleanse these towers by destroying the overlord, and then move on to the next one. The roguelike structure should make more sense with that description. As for the actual movement and combat, Movement is pretty normal for first-person shooters. You have a boost, and you move fairly quickly. You do have a melee, and you can melee in different directions depending on the movement keys you are pushing. This is because this game has a glory kill system like Doom Eternal, but it works a little differently. When you damage an enemy enough, they will go into a stun state, you melee them, and then you will get armor back. You can't get health back through these runs. If you're lucky, you'll find a shop where you can buy like 35 health, but you'll never just regenerate health or get chip health back. You will get a sizable amount of health back after you defeat a boss, but there's a long time between each boss. So making sure you don't take any damage is very important. That said, the armor works like actual armor, and you will not take any damage until that armor is destroyed. And with every takedown you do, you will get back some armor. So it does have light resource management. And this is where the different directional punches come into play. When you punch an enemy in a takedown state, they will launch the direction you're punching them and then blow up. To be honest, the only directions I used was forward and backward, and backward just launched them upward, which is useful. But if I wanted to launch them left and right, I would just look left and right usually. You will find upgrades as you go through each run. You have a grenade slot, and these grenades are pretty varied. You might have one that's just a stun grenade that does damage, and that one is really useful because you effectively have a flashbang. You might have one that's a shock grenade that emits pulsing electricity. Or you might have one that launches you into the air and creates a massive fire explosion when you land, and this will do damage over time. Of course, you will find better and new weapons as you play through each run. Now, these weapons at their core function like weapons you've used before, SMG, pistol, shotgun, so on, but they have different affixes to them to make them more unique. 
For example, you may effectively have an assault rifle that lights the enemies on fire. Or maybe you have a charged pistol that lights the enemies on fire. And then maybe you'll come across another weapon that does more damage to enemies on fire, and those two synergize well. With more towers you destroy, the more weapons you will see. Now, since one of your arms is a giant metal robot arm that you need to punch people at any time, the reloading animations are a bit different. They're more like a sci-fi overheating weapon. It doesn't have the cool factor that like a tactical shooter would have, but the animations are still satisfying in a different way. I don't know, the more I get into shooters, the more I appreciate more sci-fi stuff. We've seen the same modern military thing a million times ago. I, I can see real guns in real life. I like some sci-fi stuff. In fact, I would love more tactical shooters in sci-fi environments. We need more Republic Commandos. I would love a spin-off of Halo ODST, but tactical shooter. I mean, that's just a cool idea, but we never got it. I'm getting really off topic. Back to Battle Shapers. It will take you roughly 20 to 25 minutes to get through one tower. You can choose which tower you want to attack first. The tower on the left is very green. It's full of plants. It's like a living tower, a living rainforest, if you will. The tower in the middle is a robot factory. Almost reminds me more of like an F1 garage mixed with a rock climbing facility than anything else. I don't know, it looks nice. Anyway, when you're choosing these towers, you will get to see which end boss is at which tower. This is random, it won't be the same boss every single time, but they'll also do more when you choose which tower you go to. Depending on the boss you get and which tower you're going to, they'll set out different traps. Maybe one boss will have fire shoot out of the ground, maybe another boss will have laser turrets. And when you're in the middle of one of the bigger fights, after you destroy enough robots, they will empower the robots in that area, usually by drones that will buff any nearby enemy. The enemies themselves are already pretty varied, so this gives you a little bit more to focus on. You can't just go full brain dead and start shooting at whatever is closest to you. For example, there's an enemy that spawns a bunch of tiny, annoying robot things that jump at you and blow up. Get rid of this damn thing immediately, it's incredibly annoying. Annoying in a way that's not detrimental to the game, but you definitely want to focus it. As you're going through these towers, you may occasionally come across a shop. This will give you three items at random that you can buy. What you're buying things out of the shop with is currency you'll find through the run. This currency, which looks like that gold thing on Meowth's head, only works in this shop. You lose it all when you die. So don't bother saving it up use what you got. The shop will show up usually right before the final boss. As for the bosses themselves, I actually really like them, mostly. If I had to rank these bosses by difficulty, I would say the easiest is Colossus, the middle is Wind Magistrate, and the most difficult is the Strike Mantis. With that said, they're all significantly more difficult than the enemies you'll fight before. None of them are a walk in the park, at least not the first few times you play. For the most part, I like these bosses quite a lot. If I get hit by them, Usually it's my fault. They telegraph their attacks properly, but they really hit hard. Mess up a few times and you're dead. And like I said, I like these designs actually quite a lot. The wind character just looks really cool. And the strike mantis just looks like a smart ass. Colossus is just kind of there, probably my least favorite one. I do have some complaints though. I think the base enemies are, if anything, too easy. There is a really big significant jump from the rest of the run to the bosses. The rest of the run doesn't properly build up to this boss, so it goes from almost autopiloting to I need to pay attention or I'm instantly dead. I don't think any major adjustments needs to happen, perhaps bringing the bosses down a little bit to their level, but also bringing up the enemies up towards the bosses. That's with one exception. The Strike Mantis, I think, goes a little too far on the hard side. The attacks look telegraphed, but they're deceivingly hard to avoid. He also seems more offensive than the other ones, which is probably intentional by design, but I definitely struggle with this boss more than the others. It feels like a pretty big step up. Eventually, though, you will finally beat one of these bosses. With that tower clear, you will get access to your cores. The first core you get is the Adamant Core. Effectively, this is your special ability. This will spawn a bubble around you that will reflect projectiles back to your opponents. But there's one thing I left out. As you're exploring these towers, you will get passive upgrades. It will give you three choices. These choices will passively buff you. For example, when you do a takedown, you'll gain two Fortify. This will reduce the next damage you take by 10% per stack, and all stacks are consumed on hit. There's another one where whenever you lose Fortify, you'll gain an equal amount of Fury. Fury increases the damage of your weapons and abilities by 10%, for 7.5 seconds, and this affects stacks. And then there are upgrades that won't passively buff you, but change how you play the game entirely. My personal favorite one is that meleeing a projectile will launch the projectile back. You're now playing Ultra Kill. 
And then you'll get buffs that'll stack on top of that, like reflected projectiles will do double the amount of damage. It's a really cool system. What's neat is that from this point on, when you defeat another tower, you'll gain access to another core. These cores are tied to the bosses, like say a wind core for the wind boss. And these cores will unlock entirely new enhancements. So suddenly you'll get access to things like knocking enemies out of the way and damaging them when you boost through them. These cores themselves will also give you new abilities. However, you need to use them for a bit before you can unlock those. For a while, these cores will be relegated to just a secondary core where you get these enhancement options. You can't use them as a primary core until you've used them enough to unlock that. In between each run, you can upgrade things at your home base. There's another currency, these purple ball things. At your home base, you can buy weapons, talents, and abilities. Weapons are exactly what you think they would be, they're just weapons. These only spawn once for that run. They don't carry over to each run. Talents, on the other hand, are permanent upgrades to your character. These will do things like giving you more armor or giving you more health or reducing the cooldown for your dash. But some of these are really useful. For example, one of them gives you permanent access to backpack reloading. If you look in the bottom right, you can see the gun on your back reloading. I love when games do this. I love this mechanic. It speeds up combat so much. It allows me to constantly be on the aggressive when I'm being overwhelmed by enemies. It solves the issue of reloading being awkward in these styles of shooters. And then there are abilities, which these are just your grenades you can throw or the ground pound I mentioned earlier. As you are exploring the towers, you will find blueprints so you can buy more things in these menus. And then this point on, you're fully decked out. Every time I defeated a tower, I was noticing more and more things I could tinker around with. This game is aiming to be replayable as you would expect from a roguelite. As I mentioned earlier, this game is in early access. It's just a raw game, there are no microtransactions, there's no NFTs, thank god. They're expecting the early access period to last between 6 to 12 months. And of course, with new updates, we'll come with constant new content, so on like you would expect with early access games. Basically, new towers, new abilities, new weapons, stuff like that. There's one question I'm sure will be very common. Are there any plans for co-op? And no. Not even in a it's not in the game right now sort of way, but just there are no plans ever to include multiplayer features in the game. Personally, I'm a little disappointed by that. This game would fit co-op perfectly. I would encourage the devs to reconsider. You could add new classes, and this is a game that would completely pop off if it had co-op, like it's just perfect for this kind of game. But also adding co-op to your game is a ton of work and really complicated and difficult, so I understand. So what are my final thoughts of this game? Well, when I first started playing it, I wasn't entirely sold. I wasn't offended. I didn't like hate it or anything. But the more I played it, the more I wanted to keep playing. It. Yeah, it's got that roguelite pull where you get deeper into a run and then the game starts clicking. And it also has some Doom Eternal resource management properties going on in there. So it's a pretty good shooter if this is your thing. Again, link down below in the video information if you want to buy this game yourself or just wishlist it. It's currently only on Steam. Big thanks to Metric Empire for sponsoring this video. And I'll see you guys next time.